welcome you all to part one of the chapter atoms everything in the universe is made up of atoms then what is an atom made up of that will be the session of today let us start our journey in an atom there is an experiment performed by giger and marston under the guidance of rutherford and that experiment was rutherford's alpha particle scattering experiment they did this experiment to find what is present in an atom the experimental setup was like this they took a source which emitted alpha particle bismuth and alpha particles were emitted in all directions they need to be collimated in a single direction that's why they used lead bricks through lead bricks alpha particles were uh, collimated in a single direction and these alpha particles meant to fall on thin gold foil they used gold because gold is highly malleable it can be drawn into thin sheets so thin that it consists of single layer of gold atoms when alpha particle passed through this gold foil they were deflected in different angles to detect that a rotatable detector was used which was fitted with a microscope a screen was kept in front of this which was made up of zinc sulfide zinc sulfide is photosensitive when alpha particles falls in zinc sulfide a flash of light was emitted which can which was detected by this detector and th this was the experimental setup made by giger and master and they did certain observations let us check it out the first observation what they made is that most of the alpha particle passed through the gold file and they deflected 99.86 percent of the alpha particles did not deflect at all right the first observation most of the alpha particles passed through gold file and they deflected and the second observation is some of the alpha particles deflected at small angles right so some of the alpha particles were deflected by small angles and surprisingly some of the alpha particles even deflected more than 90 degree and this is the third observation made very few alpha particles deflected more than 90 degree one in 8000 alpha particles were deflected like this so very few alpha particles deflected more than 90 degree and these were the three observations made by giger and marston they did this observations based upon the graph plotted between number of alpha particles scattered and the scattering angle from this graph they came to know that most of the alpha particles were undeflected some of the alpha particles deflected at small angles very few of the alpha particles deflected more than 90 degree and these were the observations made and they made some conclusions based upon these observations and let us check it out the conclusions of this experiment now let us study about the conclusions made by alpha particle scattering experiment the first conclusion is since most of the alpha particle passed through the gold foil and deflected it means that most of the space in an atom must be empty right since 99.86 percent of the alpha particles were undeflected means about 99 percent of the space in an atom must be empty now here right so this was the first conclusion the second conclusion alpha particles are nothing but helium nucleus whose charge is 2 and mass is 4 now here right and for mass is 4 am mu it is positively charged here in this experiment alpha particles are scattered means there should be something in an atom which is positively charged under heavy mass so that it can uh, deflect the alpha particles and what is that that is that rutherford called it as nucleus alpha particles being positively charged and large mass can be deflected only by large repulsive force and this force is provided by heavy and positively charged region in an atom and that is called as nucleus and this is the second conclusion let us go with the third one when alpha particles approaches towards the gold foil they are deflected by a large repulsive force and that large repulsive force is given by coulomb's law that is f is equal to 1 divided by 4 pi epsilon naught product of the charges one charge of the alpha particle that is 2e charge of the nucleus that is ze divided by r square r is the distance between alpha particle and nucleus so these are conclusions of alpha particle scattering experiment this r can be called as impact parameter it is denoted by b right the trajectory of the alpha particle depends upon this parameter so what is that let us check it out diagrammatically if alpha particle is passing through this part it is undeflected if the distance is reduced the, there will be a deflection of this alpha particles if distance is even reduced again the deflection will be more means as the distance is reduced the angle of scattering increased and that distance is called as impact parameter 
If impact parameter is small, then the scattering angle is large. Then what is impact parameter then? This perpendicular distance of initial velocity vector of alpha particle and central line of the nucleus, that distance is called as impact parameter. What is the significance of impact parameter? As impact parameter is small, the angle of scattering is large. Right? Okay. Then let me uh, make one uh, conclusion here that what happens if impact parameter becomes zero means what happens if particle moves exactly at this path right that retraces its path itself then what is the angle of scattering now here if this alpha particle retraces the angle of scattering is 180 degree right so this is all about impact parameter how much a nucleus impacts the alpha particle so this with some of the conclusions of alpha particle scattering experiment. From this uh, conclusions, Rutherford gave the model of atom. Let us check it out. What is that model now? Rutherford's model of an atom was the result of alpha particle scattering experiment. This model gave the idea about the atom. It stated that the entire mass and positive charges of an atom is concentrated at the center of the atom that Rutherford called as nucleus. This is the main reason the credit of discovery of nucleus is given to the approach. It also stated the comparison about the atom as well as the nucleus. The size of the nucleus is of the order 10 raised to minus 50 meter as compared to the atom which was about 10 raised to minus 10 meter. Means the size of the nucleus is very small compared to that of atom. If you compare the size of the atom with the size of the cricket stadium, then the size of the nucleus will be the size of the cricket ball. That much small the nucleus is. It also stated about the electrons revolving around the nucleus. How are the electrons revolving? A nuclear charge electrons revolve around the nucleus just as planets revolving around the sun. That is why this model is also called as planetary model of an atom. It compared the number of negatively charged revolving and number of positively charged present inside the atom. Both were equal. That is why the atom is electrically neutral. The size of the electron is negligibly small. And the space between the electron and the nucleus is almost empty. This was again the result of Rutherford's alpha particles experiment. Now, if electrons are revolving around the nucleus, then there should be a centripetal force, and that centripetal force is given by electrostatic force of attraction between electron and the nucleus, and that centripetal force is given by electrostatic force of attraction. So these were some points about uh, Rutherford's model of an atom. This model had some drawbacks. It could not explain the stability of the atom. According to this model, electrons are revolving around the nucleus. If electrons are revolving around the nucleus, must, it must be exhilarated. Exhilarated charge always emits electromagnetic waves. If electrons are emitting electromagnetic waves, then it should not be in the same path. It should reduce the path and it should fall into the nucleus, which does not happen. That is why it could not explain the stability of the atom. Even it could not explain the origin of spectral lines from the atoms. It could not explain why atoms emit light of discrete wavelength. Atoms always emit light of discrete wavelength. It will not emit light of all the wavelengths. So the explanation for this point was not given by this Rutherford's model. So these are some of the drawbacks of Rutherford's model of an atom. Thank you.